name is Emma Bush and today I'm here to talk to you about the altruistic nature of red squirrels towards their kin. The original article was written by Gorell, McAdams, Coltman, Humphreys and Booten in 2010 and was published in Nature's Communication. The aim was to determine the fitness costs or benefits of adopting kin in red squirrels using the context of Hamilton's Law. The methods, um, all squirrels were given ear tags or notches, just so we could identify them. Uh, the squirrels were then observed and all the behaviours were reported. All the nesting sites were monitored and checked daily to see if any new litter mates from, from other litters had been added. And the records were then used to determine the relationship between the adopted kin and the surrogate mother. The results. Um, in 19 years, there were five adoptions. Uh, all of these adoptions were in different years and with different females. And in all five cases, the surrogate dams were sufficiently related to the adopted juvenile that it did enhance their litter mates inclusive fitness and the dams. Okay. With this graph here, the solid line represents the predicted cost of fitness of adoption to the surrogate dam. Each of these dashed lines represents a different degree of relatedness to the dam. And the dashed lines also show the fitness benefit to the adopted juvenile decreases with litter size. Discussion. Uh, the opportunity to increase the inclusive fitness does not happen very often. It is a very, very rare occurrence. Um, however, with that being said, there is definitely a bias towards adopting the kin. Um, which suggests that kin selection has been strong enough to favour the persistence of this unique behaviour. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to find an updated article that was relevant to the paper. Um, uh, in conclusion, providing that the orphan and surrogate dam are closely related enough, the adoption of kin is beneficial to both the juvenile and the surrogate dam. Thank you for listening.